For those of us that are lucky enough to go into space and up to the International Space Station, this part of the ride is the most exciting. Seeing the view of planet Earth from space for the first time is something that I will never forget. It's an amazing feat of science and engineering to dock this Soyuz spacecraft blasted off from Kazakhstan with the International Space Station that is travelling around the Earth at five miles every second. The International Space Station is closer to us than London is from the tip of Cornwall and normally we can rendezvous and dock within six hours. However, it can take up to two days. There is always a Soyuz spacecraft docked with the ISS, so we can escape from the space station at any time. The Soyuz is like our lifeboat, in case of an emergency on board the ISS, such as a fire or depressurization. Those massive sails turn the sun's energy into electricity which powers the space station. The ISS is solar powered. The great thing about the International Space Station is that it's not owned by a single country, but it's a collaboration of many countries across the world, including the UK. Let me show you what happens inside different parts of the space station. This is Node 1, also called Unity. It's our kitchen and it's where we come to eat our meals at the end of the day. This module we call the lab, or destiny. It's the US laboratory, and it's where we do a lot of scientific experiments. And there's also a cycle machine in there. This module is Columbus. It's the European laboratory, and it's where a lot of our European science is located, such as the electronic magnetic levitator. We also do a lot of our human physiology experiments here. This module is Node 2, or Harmony. It's where our crew quarters are, so this is where four astronauts sleep on board the space station. This module is Node 3, or Tranquility. It's where a lot of our exercise equipment is. Also, blue. Attached to Node 3, is one of the best places on the space station. It's called the cupola, a large earth-facing window where astronauts can come and take some of those beautiful photographs we see of planet Earth from space. The space station is the largest man-made object in space. It's as long as 13 London buses end to end and it orbits the Earth at nearly 8 kilometers every second. That's about 17,000 miles per hour. Gravity holds the International Space Station down towards Earth in the same way that it holds all of us to the Earth so that we don't float away. We're not very far away, so we actually experience 90% of the gravity that you feel on the surface of the Earth. The space station is traveling very fast. So although gravity pulls us towards the Earth, as we fall towards it, we miss the ground and end up in orbit around the Earth. We're actually constantly falling around the Earth.
Can you imagine what would happen if the space station slowed down? Gravity would pull us down towards the surface and we wouldn't travel fast enough to miss the ground. In the same way, what if we went faster? Then we would be able to escape the pull of gravity and move into a higher and higher orbit or even escape the Earth altogether. We understand how to keep the International Space Station in orbit due to the laws of gravity and motion first described by Sir Isaac Newton over 300 years ago. This is why I chose Principia as my mission name in honour of his life's work. Here we can see the side of the Earth that is lit up by the Sun. As the Earth spins and the countries move into nighttime, astronauts can look down from the space station and see the many lights of all the cities below, and also lightning from thunderstorms around the planet. We orbit the Earth 16 times every day on board the International Space Station. That means once around the planet every 90 minutes. So every 45 minutes, we're seeing either a sunrise or a sunset. On the International Space Station, astronauts are only 250 miles away from the surface of the Earth. But if we want to send people to the moon again, that's a massive journey of nearly 240,000 miles. People have walked on the moon, but that's the furthest point that we have visited. Other parts of our solar system have only been explored with space probes and telescopes. Our work on the International Space Station is preparing us to make that next great step, a manned mission to Mars. There are many fascinating places to visit in our solar system. And one day, I am certain that we will have explored them all. However, I'm sure that when we look back at planet Earth, it will always remain the most beautiful place in our solar system. <laughs>